Hey everyone, I'm Isaiah from Pre Through Audio, and today I'm going to be showing you my approach to mixing dense vocal productions and modern metal. So I'm not sure if you could tell from the demo, but there is two vocalists in this track. So that made things uh, from the start a little bit different than a normal mix. Generally, what I like to do is get a main vocal mix that just sounds good on the mic and the vocalist. I will always do a separate chain for each vocalist. Sometimes it's similar gear, but the settings will generally just be a little different or sometimes even the same if it's really matched up. So here's what I have for Devon. Um, we have a super simple chain going on here. I just three plugins for most of these. A lot of these vocals are gonna be doing a lot of the effects on the backgrounds and trying to keep the mains a lot drier because there's just so much going on and with all the verbs and stuff that I have going on, I just wanna make sure that we're not overloading everything too much. So here's what day sounded like before we did any processing. Sanity flows from my veins within. Nothing too crazy, but uh, essentially I'm just gonna remove a little bit of that low end that just doesn't need to exist. There's really nothing down under 100 that I need. I did this slight little cut in the mids on the virtual mix rack. I've got just this 1176 bluey. I've also got a 2A and then a little bit of saturation. Insanity flows from my veins within. Obviously the 2A is not really doing too much, but on just the really loud words, it's going about a dB or so. Then the saturation at the end is just to give it a lot more color and brightness. Insanity flows from my veins within. I really just love how the New York sounds on vocals, especially Day's voice. It is a little harsh now, so after that I just put on this de uh, the Waves de I've talked about this in other videos. It does do this like nice little thing where it smooths out the high end a little bit as well as doing de -essing. Insanity flows from my veins within. As you can tell, I'm just going down a couple dB, trying not to hit it too hard. One of the main things to focus on when you're mixing a vocal and doing a de is just make sure that you're not removing too much of the S. Just make sure that it sounds natural. The last thing I'm doing on this chain is just a limiter to probably smooth out some peaks. Insanity flows from my veins within. So as you can tell, only like two words in that even hit it. So it's not doing too much, but it's just making sure that nothing's too loud. So that's the chain that I'm going to be using across pretty much all of Day's vocals as a starting point. And then anything else that I do is pretty much going to be added on top of this. This is just getting it to be my main vocal sound for the track. I like to generally just cover that across all of my tracks because they're not going to need a different compressor setting for most vocals. I also like to normalize all of my vocals as I come in. That's why you see all these are cut. So generally all of them should be hitting the compressor the same. So I don't really have to worry about fixing that setting from track to track. In this track, Naz is doing a lot of screaming, so I'm going to be making sure to do a different approach to this one. I have this limiter, which is just going to take off the peaks. So like the last vocal, I have this same little cut going on here that was just kind of something that I noticed was probably just in the room of, that they were tracking in. And then the next thing I have going on is this virtual mix rack. But this one, I'm hitting the compressor and the saturation quite a bit harder. And then after that, I got to hit it with the de just because it is getting kind of harsh. So as you can tell, I'm kind of using this de like I was talking about earlier to kind of control the high end as well as de -S. So I'm hitting this one pretty hard, but it sounds fine. He's not getting a lisp. And then the last thing on the chain is just an L1, which I'm probably just doing as my one final attempt to keep this thing flat. Same thing as Naz with Day. Uh, I'm going to be using that pretty much as a starting point for all of his screaming tracks. So for me, I really like to have a stereo sounding double right under my main. Generally, that just comes down to if they gave me two mono tracks, I'm going to want to just do a little stereo micro shift on one. I like to use Sound Toys micro shift. It just sounds really sick. To me, it gives me that little width sound I, I love. So obviously, I have the same chain that I just had for Day's last one. So here's how the main vocal sounds, and then I'll bring in the double. And I've been fighting all my life just to make this. As you can tell, it makes it a lot bigger sounding, and I really love that like lush sound that I kind of feel like it gets in the high mids. One super important thing when mixing vocals is that you don't want to abuse the EQ. For instance, if you start cutting a bunch of frequencies out, it starts sounding not so much like that person's voice, and it starts creating a wonky sound. And I think a lot of people tend to not realize that panning and volume is going to get 90% of the way there for you, and the EQ should be used as your last-ditch effort if something needs to be slightly adjusted. But for something like a vocal, 
vocal. I really don't want to put a bunch of points on it and start messing with the phase and making the vocal sound weird because to me, the more I EQ it, the less it's going to sound like Day or the less it's going to sound like Nas. And I don't want that to happen because anyone who listens to that band is looking to hear that singer. So for example, with this, instead of reaching for an EQ, when I have this main and double right here, I keep those mono. I'm not going too crazy on the main vocal and spreading it and going for this massively wide sound because I'm going to allow the background vocals to handle that stereo spread. So once these vocals come in here, I have all of these vocals panned in different directions and they're all kind of doing different things. So now I'm not going to be too focused on, oh wow, now I got to make six vocals compete in this space. I got to make two vocals compete here, two vocals compete here, and my mains compete here in the mix. And that really just kind of allows me to create space for it. If you don't create space for the vocal, you're just going to have to EQ to death until it doesn't sound like the vocalist. And I've been fighting all my life just to make this right. And here it is when we center them all out. And I've been fighting all my life just to make this right. As you can tell, yes, you can hear everything, but you kind of can't hear anything, if that makes sense. You're pretty much getting a jumble of all different vocals, whereas if I can pay attention to the sides versus pay attention to the middle, I can pick out what's going on in either way. And I've been fighting all my life just to make this right. That's a simple way to make sure that your vocals are gonna not sit on top of each other and you're gonna be able to make some room in the mix. The next trick I wanna go over is kind of just a quick mixing trick, so it's not anything you worry too much about with the production. One thing that I really love to do when you have a lot of different vocals going on is that I like to DS the doubles really, really hard because it just allows you to clear up the little differences because even when you vocal line, anytime an S hits differently from the next S, you're really gonna hear that. I As you can tell, that really pulls back on the harshness of the vocals and it lets everything breathe a little more. I think before the de turned on, what you're really hearing is just a lot of things competing for the top vocal spot when the main really is what you want to be in the front. Everything else in the production is just a layer that's building up to support the main. And one more really cool thing that you can do when it comes down to adding vocal layers is if you have something like ahs and oohs behind your singing, sometimes it's nice to hit it with a multi-band compressor just to make sure that anytime a certain notes hit where the frequencies really start to build up, pulls back on itself and really just cleans itself up. I really like C4 because it allows me just to kind of pick whatever I'm doing and it allows me just to kind of shape it. I don't really think too much about it as a compressor. I'm just kind of doing like a tone shape with it. So here's what it sounds like before. And I've been fighting all my life just to make this right. And I've been fighting all my life just to make this right. And it flows from my veins with this. It's really not safe for you to leave my side. So as you can tell, it does clean it up quite a bit and I'm not really doing too much on this high band. I am pulling it down slightly when it does get a little weird because there are some like little mouth noises that I wanted to clear up when it hits too hard. The settings here aren't really too important. I just have a fast attack and a slow release. I just know that this vocal is not moving too much so I don't really need to worry about having a fast release. So one of the last things I want to go over is how I run my verb and delay sends. Obviously reverb and delay are one of the most important factors for getting your vocals to fit into the mix and sound like they're a part of the song. If you don't do enough reverb, it's going to sound super dry and really awkward to the listener. And if you do too much reverb, it's going to sound like your singer is singing from a mile down the road. This can really be a problem because if you're trying to have a modern metal song, really want that vocal to sound in your face, but I also really want to make sure that it's got that ambience that can compete with huge drum rooms and the massive sounding everything else. So if we don't have that certain big delay, it's not going to fit in the mix. So what I like to do is run a little bit of side chaining with my main vocal. And I actually use the main vocal group to be pulling down on the volume of the reverb send while the vocal is playing. So as soon as the vocal stops, the reverb comes back up to level and it lets the vocal sound ambient, but then while the vocal's going, it's not gonna be overbearing. Essentially what I'll do is I'll set up my reverb send as normal. I just, whatever you wanna use for reverb. I love Verb Suite Classics for vocals. A lot of the times it just has good plates in it. And then I will choose whatever reverb sound I like and I'll dial it to taste. And then essentially what I'll do from there is I'll put a compressor after it. And then whatever vocals you have, essentially since my main vocal channel is gonna be dry and no reverbs or delays or anything, I'm just using my main track because that'll 
have every vocal that's going to be going to this anyways. And this will allow me to make sure that I can control the verb that's being sent out of this. Here's a reverb track with no sidechain. As you can tell, the volume just stays the same. And when we add on the sidechain, when the vocal's playing and directly going, we're going to not be able to hear the reverb as loud. And then as soon as it stops, it'll come right back up. And obviously with a smaller tail, it's a little bit harder to hear, but it, the volume is just riding back up the second the vocal ends. And that's essentially what I'm trying to do here. As you can tell, I'm doing this side chain for all of the reverb and delays for this, just to make sure that none of my reverbs and delays are ever gonna be competing with the main vocal in any way. That's one of the most important things in getting that pro sounding vocal mix is because a lot of people let their reverbs and delays just kind of run wherever they want. And in my opinion, that's kind of where you start to get a messy sounding vocal mix where words aren't super clear and you start not being able to hear every sound. So now I'm gonna play you the vocals without the side chain and then with the side chain so you can see the difference. So as you can tell, it's just a little bit clearer and it's not really that we're trying to make a huge difference because we're only pulling these back a couple dB at a time on each channel. The whole idea here is just to make sure that the reverb is always tucked just a bit behind the mains and that they never are competing for each other. We're not really looking to do crazy drastic differences. I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions about my vocal mixing process, leave them down in the comments below or you can join my free Facebook group and ask it there. Have a good day and stay creative.